Hi guys, welcome back to The Clean Scalpel. Um, we're back and we're going to be continuing with our series on throwing the perfect backhand. Um, and again guys, the goal and the reason we're doing all of this is to make sure that we as surgeons are treating our profession like athletes treat their profession with a lot of seriousness that requires time and practice. So um, today, like we did with the backhand, what we're going to do is to go over the two different ways using different types of holding techniques that we're going to throw this backhand. The biggest difference between the forehand and the backhand is that you will find that throwing the backhand is much more of a natural curved throw and there won't be a lot of difference between palming the instrument or putting your fingers in, okay? So let's get down to it, okay? So the first thing, uh, and really all we need for this is, again, uh, any kind of needle driver and, of course, a needle and some suture. Um, suture is really not necessary. I always keep a little bit of a tail to help the needle balance itself. Um, and remember, guys, going back to the video on how to load the needle, again, with the backhand, you want to load it at approximately 50% and make sure the needle is bent slightly away from you. Now. Let's get down to the first thing, which is putting your fingers in. So remember, same thing, index finger, thumb, and you're going to use, uh, excuse me, uh, ring finger and your thumb, and your index fing finger helps to go balance. The difference between the forehand and the backhand is uh, really um, changed as we move towards these techniques uh, with the backhand, okay? So you notice that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hyper supinate the arm. Okay, so the arm is going to go into hypersupination. And again, for the people that haven't really worked on their mobility or some of the strengthening that we talked about, this is going to hurt. It should hurt. And that is a normal feeling to hypersupinate. What I want to do is try to approach whatever I'm taking the bite at a 90 degree angle. So as I take a bite of this cloth, I'm trying to approach it really in this case parallel to it. And I'm going to take that bite and you notice I'm just going to pronate. Once the suture is in, watch my hand now, we're going to pronate, and this will now, you'll feel the relaxation in your grip. With this, now there's again several ways to approach this, but the way I always prefer is moving the needle from the front end, so I'm actually going to supinate a little bit, grab the front of the needle, and pronate even more. Okay. My goal here is to get the needle where I want it to get loaded, because this is again going to build to our needle manipulation lecture, which again is coming up very, very soon, and I think you guys will be very excited for that. So after the pronation, I'm going to supinate a little bit, grab at 50%, okay, click on, and I'm just going to pronate the needle. So that is again how you throw it with your fingers in the hole. Now, I'm going to quickly jump to palming it because it's again very, very similar. Now, with the palming, the only difference is that you may not feel that tension when you hypersupinate the needle. Now, I say needle, not your hand, because you can essentially roll the needle back like this, okay, take the bite, and then you notice my hands, it's just rolling the needle driver. Now, unclick, same thing, I'm going to go into pronation, grab the needle from the front, pronate a little bit, get it back to where I want it click and then pronate out. Now, here if you pronate out, again you can spin the needle back, get it ready for the next bite. So the, the one benefit with palming the instrument is it lets you kind of spin and even gets lets you able to get really a nice purchase of this um, the tissue if you wanted to go even more uh, at a 90 degree angle. The hypersupination you are restricted to about you know getting it parallel to the tissue. Obviously, for me, when I'm doing it on blood vessels, it's important to be um, perpendicular as I approach the vessel, and you can get that with keeping your fingers in. What most of you may notice is that the backhand is a much more natural turn. Sometimes when you're throwing forehands, you can really crank it with your forearm and not necessarily use the curve of the needle. When you do a backhand, whether you put your fingers in or you palm it, you're almost forced to use the curve of the needle. So if you feel like you're not necessarily using the curve of the needle well on the forehand, try practicing your backhands first. I think if you do that, you will notice what it's supposed to feel like 
or the lack of resistance as you're turning the needle in the tissue. Uh, these are subtle things, but I think you will start noticing the difference. Now, I've had a few medical students uh, reach out to me and say, uh, Dr. Shukla, you are doing these things, but uh, what is a good way to practice? Now, um, in the next section, I'm going to actually just do a quick session just to show how I practice the forehand and the backhand. And actually what it involves is banana peels. The reason I say banana peels is because they are thick enough to actually gather the tissue and if you're not necessarily using the curve of the needle you will feel that increased resistance okay banana peels are also easily available and if your potassium is low well there you got uh, you're killing two birds with one stone okay um, until then I think uh, I'll try to get that video out by uh, next week for you but uh, thanks for tuning in uh, please subscribe and uh, please comment if there's anything else you want to see I really want to uh, thank all the medical students that have been reaching out to uh, comment and also to make suggestions about what we should go next uh, so until next week we'll see you then bye bye